we're having a look at um, rigs for eel fishing. Um, starting off with bottom fishing rigs. Um, in the early days, John Sidley, who was the godfather of modern eel angling, he used a conventional lecture rig to fish worms at long range and he used a massive size 2 O's hook, which is it's far bigger than we use nowadays. So now we jump to uh, eel anglers rigs today, 40 years later, and uh, fishing tackle developments have brought us run rings, beads, ledger stops, wire traces, and much smaller hooks that are less likely to harm the eel. The, I get fed up with looking at rigs in hooks because they're all standardised and uniform and some people don't know what it looks like in real life. And it doesn't look so fancy in real life as the actual thing. Right, so we've got the... Um, first we're going to look at the basic ledger rig which is a good rig for fishing over harder bottom, such as firm mud, clay, gravel or sand. And um, it's just a, a basic free-running ledger rig. Because here we're showing you different rigs for using on different bottom stratas. You don't use the same rig on every water. And eel anglers fish in some very wild places with weed and wood and rocks and everything. So we're showing you the rigs to deal with that today. Um, if you've got this basic ledger rig and you want to fish amongst weed, you get the PVA bag, pop the ledger rig inside, and it will drop down through the weed. And then when the PVA bag dissolves, your bait is lying at the bottom of the weed bed. Because weed grows like a forest. There's a thick canopy on the top of bushy stuff. When you get your PVA bag down that, it's lying along the trunks of the trees, so to speak, down on, on, the, on the bed. Now, if you want to fish over a soft bottom, which most uh, eel waters are, the, the lead can sink into the soft silt and get buried amongst debris and vegetation, which can obstruct the run ring, so it's preferable to add a link from the lead to the run ring which uh, is what we've done here. There's two rigs really for fishing over silt. The basic link ledger rig is a good rig for fishing when you haven't got a wire trace, i.e. you've got braid, mono or fluoro trace. And uh, there's another rig called the, the John Sidley rig or the JS rig and this link is adapted for using with a wire trace for fishing over soft silt and debris. And that is because there's, a, there's an upper trace for this link ledger to wrap around. And uh, it doesn't like to wrap around the wire because it won't untwist. And on the link ledger rig, that is like the JS rig without the upper trace which you don't need because you haven't got the, the wire on the end trace. So moving on now from a silt bottom to rocks and ledges. Um, I've called this top one the rocky rig. I use this in Scotland uh, fishing in glacial lots where I'm fishing over 100 foot deep and it's very snaggy rocky bottom. My ledger always got wedged between the rocks and I never got the rig back. So this lead with a, a long plastic tube on it tends to lie across the cracks in the rock and doesn't get stuck in it. We just have a very short trace in it, shorter than the length of the tube so it won't whip around your line when you're casting long range. Um, very basic because rigs are basic so to take this rocky rig a stage further now, we've got a rocky riser rig, which is the same rocky rig, but we've put two buoyant floats on the, the end of the, the lead tube. The reason for this 
is that when you're fishing over a steep drop off at long range, such as on a glacial lock like uh, Baller or Loch Ness or, or, or even the river of Ebro in Spain, it's like this, you go out and over the drop off and then when you're trying to wind back in, you, you get stuck on the drop off and you never get your leg back. So we, we have this buoyancy to it, so when you want to retrieve, you pull to tighten your line and wind as fast as you can and this riser rig rises up to the surface and then you'll see it pop up at long range and then you just wind it in along the surface over all the snags so you won't lose your rig. Now, to move on to another bottom strata, that was for rocks and ledges, and now we're going on to a wooden bottom. I don't know if you can see the photograph very well, but in this one we've got tree roots underwater, and this one here is a flooded reservoir, and there's saplings growing off the bottom. If you cast your rig into this, you're going to get your hook stuck amongst the wood. So we've actually added a hook guard, so you can retrieve your rig without getting wrapped around the wood. So we've got rigs fishing on wooden bottom. I have used this, and I've brought with DB using it, fishing amongst wood and snags. All the eels were hiding there, and you had to go in after them to catch them. So that's when I devised this rig. So, now I'll move on to off-bottom rigs, which for fishing above the weed bed. This is the CD or Dyson rig. So, it's a really good, effective rig for fishing over the top of weeds and snags. Um, it's an often made assumption that eels crawl along the bottom to find their food. In actual fact, eels swim through the water rather than creeping along the bottom and they will actively search for food mid-water. The off-bottom mid-water process of fishing has now been widely recognised as a very successful way of catching eels. In fact, my catch rate, the year I started fishing up three or four feet up off the bottom, my catch rate went up by probably about 70% and guess it's catching eel after eel after eel. I think they just smell it better when it's up in the water because they are centimetres. Um, so this Dyson rig, you've got your lead on the bottom, your float pops up and here's your main line here. So all these snags are underneath. The level here amongst the snags and everything else is popped up above it. So this, this space here, drawing your bait out above. Um, this rig here was actually supplied to me by, by Mark Salt of the National Anguilla Club and um, he's accounted for, for many, many eels so I'm over six pounds with it. And uh, very good. So another rig. Another rig here, fishing off the bottom. This one was uh, supplied by Nick Duffy of the Anguilla Club. And um, it's a port ball rig. He uses it for live baiting in the canal. If the port ball is, is tied off the hook and that just, just pops the bait up. It's quite a basic rig with the port ball on. The port ball keeps his live bait up off the bottom where the eel's going to find it and he finds that when the eel takes the bait this acts as a gobstopper and it stops the eel from, from swallowing the bait and de-cooking itself and he's caught an awful lot of eels doing that so it really works um, uh, so if you want to fish really high off the bottom in deep water um, for instance, um, one water fish was 40 feet deep and we're catching eels three feet below the surface. So, what we've done, we've just extended this, this Dyson rig by 
coiling up line and tying it onto the swivel at the bottom with a piece of PVA string. When you cast out, the PVA string dissolves and these loops unlink and your rig rises up to whatever length of line you've tied. Now, to move on to the float that swim feeder rigs are often used for eels. The swim feeder is uh, very good with maggots. A lot of anglers bait up with maggots. And um, you can put anything in the swim feeder to attract the fish. And um, it could be chopped up bits of fish from herbs or maggots. Personally, I, I, I just put all my bait on the hook and don't use a swim feeder, but a lot of eel anglers really believe in it. And it, it acts as a bolt rig, they hook themselves against the weight of the feeder. Now, this is one that many eel anglers have used over the years. You get a feeder, here we've got a wire cage feeder, shove some foam or sponge inside of it, and then you can soak that in oils, dips and soaks through to add flavour to attract the eel. The eel will smell that, come in and then find your bait on the six inches away. And the other method I'd like to show you is basic flow fishing rig for eels with the lift method. Very good for margin fishing. Um, you set your shot so as soon as the eel picks the bait up with your float's going to, to come over and lie flat because uh, you've got a lift bite and you're going to get an instant strike. I would use that one with very small bait um, as, as I would with the swim feeder. So different rigs for different size baits you could say. Moving resistance and self-hooking rigs, these rigs are, are, are becoming more used in the modern era of eel angling. And uh, even I am moving away from the three low resistance or no resistance rigs that I've always used and starting to, to look at uh, semi-bolt rigs and things. The, with the semi-bolt rig, the eel can pick the bait up feeling no resistance and it can move that far before this swivel hits the bead and acts as a, as a stop or a bolt to, to bolt the rig over. So it's going to move about a foot with the bait and have it in its mouth enough to hook itself. I was a bit dubious about this but I tried it this year and caught a five pound meal using it so I'm very happy. Uh, Another rig that is for the brave eel angler is the bolt rig. Eels will pluck at your bait and hook themselves against the bolt rig. <laughs> I haven't used these myself, but I intend to, to look at them in the future. Now, these rigs also work to prevent deep hooking an eel because they can't move far with the bait and swallow it. And so we're now moving on to deep hooking rigs. It's a natural progression of eel anglers to try various methods to stop the eel from gorging on the bait. Over the years, many an eel angler has had a half-hearted attempt and shoved a matchstick or twig through the eye of the swivel. Occasionally, an eel angler takes it a stage further and develops a plastic tea bar but the use of this rig has never been popularised. Here's your tea bar concept, where we've just got plastic tea bar shoved across the hook to stop the eel deep hooking itself. Now, the eel has delicate arteries leading to the gills that are situated at the back of its mouth in the throat. in such a position that a hook, if a hook could sever one of the one, and the eel will then often bleed to death. Just below these arteries is a cavity containing the eel's heart and organs, which could be fatally damaged if the eel swallowed a baited hook. So what we're saying is that the eel can damage the arteries at the back of its throat before it's even swallowed the hook, and it could then bleed to death. And if it does swallow the hook, it could damage its internal organs. So we're trying to stop the eels from deep hooking themselves. 
with, with these rigs, these anti-deep cooking rigs. Anti-deep cooking rigs stop the eel from swallowing the bait and so eliminate the danger of it damaging an artery or organ. And since all the eels caught on this rig are hooked to the lip, there's no need to use wire because the face will not come into contact with the eel's teeth. Further than that, it is okay to use a suitably large enough hook. There is no need to use a hook that may be too small because you worry about the damage a large hook would do if the eel would swallow it. You can now use a massive hook because the eel's not going to swallow it. So what I've devised and been working on this year is this gobstopper rig. This rig has evolved from the T-bar to provide an empty deep hooking gobstopper rig attached to the hook by a hair where it will prevent the eel from swallowing the bait. So again we're using smaller baits and this, this gobstopper stops them from, from deep hooking themselves. It does work because I've caught loads of eels this year using that. And then Nick Rose from the National Anguilla Club has been using this stone rig. He fishes this rig fairly straight off, fairly tight bait runner, with the, the line tight to it. The eel has to pull against the bait runner to rub the bait away from the stone, and it'll hook itself while prizing, pulling, and reversing away from the stone. I know that you can't actually use eels for bait nowadays. Uh, eel section used to be the preferred bait by Xander Atlas, and it's now against the law to take an eel for bait. Here is the law for eels and shad, small bait, and um, you must return any eel or Alice or Twain shad you catch from any water in England and Wales. This includes estuaries in inshore waters to a distance of six nautical miles, and it doesn't include conger eel. Now, an alternative bait is needed to replace this eel section. We used to use eel section because the skin is tougher than the skin of other species of fish. And because of this tough skin, eel section was very good at withstanding the attentions of bitten crabs crayfish and eels, because eels shred your baits up when you're pike and zander fishing. These nuisance species can break through the skin on softer baits and then whittle away the flesh. Now, lamprey is not a suitable alternative bait that people keep telling me. Yes, it's got the same shape as an eel, but the skin, the lamprey, has a softer skin and it's not tough enough, so that doesn't work as a replacement. Um, currently on trial, I've got clear shrink tube. It's a tough, protective tube that wraps around the inner bait, rather like the skin on an eel section. This was shown me to me by a barbel angler that was using it to put three boilers inside to keep the crayfish off, and he was catching barbel. So if you have a look, put some rubber bait here inside the, um, the shrink tube and then we've pair rigged the, the trebles on the outside. And as you can see, you, you can cut it into small sections and shove it inside the, the tube. And um, you select the appropriate diameter tube to fit the bait cut the tube to the length of the bait and then steam it over a boiling kettle and that's uh, that will work um, thank you